Last episode we left off with my frustration with uh, Python and the speed that it moved along. Since then, not very much exciting has happened. Um, we've done a lot of programming work, but then also eh, life got busy. Had a lot of things to do with uh, fall well underway here. Well, I've been really itching to get that robot moving under its own power, but it must know where it's going. It needs to have a sense of the world around it. And for that, I've been using a time-of-flight camera. The problem I ran into was that Python is very slow when you need to go through an image pixel by pixel. My plan was to take each pixel and turn that into a point in 3D space. So you end up with a point cloud of the world around it. The math involved is not extreme, but just the number of pixels that you need to process is huge. In this case, it's 43,200. So I went to one of my old favorite languages, C. Not to be confused with C++ because there's a difference. Now the overall software structure of the robot is I'm going to write these different programs as modules. And the program will start up and run in the background. And each program has a socket. Now if you're unfamiliar with sockets and programming, to put it in the simplest terms, a socket is kind of what it sounds like. It's a little port in the program that other programs can plug into and get data in and out of that program. And the idea is that my program, say for the time of flight camera, will open up and it will run and it will stay running in the background with this port open, ready for another program to request, hey, what are you seeing right now? And it will return that data. So I started writing in C, and it was fairly quick and easy to make a socket in C. Then I tried to make the time of flight camera work. I went through and followed the documentation on Arducam's website for writing a program in C that uses their camera, and it didn't work. And then I found the example file that came with their GitHub didn't match the program that was in their tutorial. So I started to work with the program that was in their GitHub. It turns out that doesn't work either. It was unable to retrieve the pixel value from a specific pixel. I went and asked on Arducam's forum about it, you know, hey, what am I doing wrong here? I think I know what I'm doing, but I'm not getting the result I need. And I got no answer at all. I dug a little deeper and found out that uh, in their documentation, the program that is actually shown in C and the result that you're supposed to get out of it don't match. There is no possible way to get that resulting output out of the example that they have shown in their documentation. I'm just kind of on a rant about that. I think that when you write software, you ought to make sure it works before you ship it. Maybe I'm old-fashioned. After that, I was left with little choice but to work with yet another language. The only other option was C++. Uh, don't get me wrong, it's a fine language. I just think of C as being much more elegant, and uh, I prefer it. C++ is sort of gangly and added on to, and uh, yeah, very powerful, but kind of confusing to look at, in my opinion, which I like easy to read code. So, I spent another couple of days transferring the work that I had done over into C++ and finally got it all working. It runs in the background and whenever requested, it takes a frame from the camera, processes that, and sends out point cloud data back to the requester. Now the speed advantage is enormous and allows me to actually do this processing on demand. C++ is executing all of that code in about uh, three milliseconds. So speed's a non-issue now. Finally, with some of that built and working, I was able to take advantage of sockets. One of the really cool things is that a socket not only allows another program on the same computer to access it, but it allows another computer over a network to access that data. And so now with this setup, I'm able to start the time of flight camera point cloud program on the robot itself. And over my Wi-Fi from my desktop, I'm able to make requests of that program and it will return the data to my desktop. 
once this robot starts driving around on its own, which I really want it to, I mean, I'm exci I'm working toward that point. I'm trying. It's just, you know, everything seems to be in the way here. Uh, once it starts driving on its own, I can do my software prototyping on my desktop computer, and it's all running over Wi-Fi so that as I modify it, the robot can be wandering around doing its thing, and I can see everything that's going on. It's all going through my computer, and when that code is written, I'm hoping to write that in Python so it doesn't have to be recompiled for a different system, I can just take those Python files and put them onto the Raspberry Pi or the Jetson Nano that's in the robot's head, and it'll run. So I'm hoping for more exciting days in development coming up. Uh, it just wasn't this last week and a half that I've been working on this thing. It's been just slogging through code and relearning some stuff. You know, I can write software in a large variety of languages, but whenever I switch languages, I kind of have to relearn it just a little bit. It slows me down. Um, I don't seem to be, you know, any better than trilingual at any given time when it comes to software. So that's about it for this week. I apologize for a rather dull and simplistic video, but hey, you know, letting you know I'm alive here and I'm working. It's just slow. See you next time.